Hello, I'm Neil Cole. Welcome to Starling Initiatives. I've been talking about shifting our values and valuing learning more than we value teaching. And I think that's an important shift. Um, we measure the things we value. We not only measure them, the things that we value, we measure, we celebrate, and we ascribe resources to, we pay for. And it's clear in church that what we celebrate, measure, and pay for is preaching sermons, right? I mean, always, it seems like it always has been. Every hero in the Christian faith is someone who preaches well. In fact, if you preach well, you can have flaws in your character that others will cover for as long as you're up on the stage wowing everyone with your personality. It's true. I've seen it dozens of times where to the detriment of the, the leader, their lives are, their, their, the holes in their lives are covered up by others so they can continue preaching. In fact, we talk about people having an anointing from God and what we mean is their ability to communicate. You know, don't confuse this. The, uh, the, the gifts of the Spirit are not evidence of the Holy Spirit. That's always been a problem for us. It's the fruit of the Spirit that we are to look for. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the things that are evidence of the anointing of God, not the ability to preach a sermon. I mean, it's cliche to know people who have been preaching good sermons and then sleeping with their secretary um, or embezzling funds. It, it's just all over the place. So what we need to do is shift in our values and start measuring things differently. So if you're valuing teaching, then what you will measure, what you will celebrate, and what you will pay for is how many people are coming to hear, are they laughing, are they crying, are they giving? Are they coming back? Those are the things you measure. And you know what? That's what we measure when it comes to church, looking at what's success for a church. It's because we value teaching. But if you valued learning, all the questions would change. You'd be asking, what are they doing about this? What's going on in their home life? What's going on in their neighborhood, in their workplace? What's happening in the world? What difference is being made? That is what would happen if we started valuing learning instead of teaching. And that's why I think this is so important. We need to make this change. Let me, let me ask, how many sermons have you heard in your life? You can't even tell me. You couldn't count them all, Christian, could you? Because every single week you hear another one. And it just adds to the pile of sermons you've heard and done nothing with. We are educated beyond our obedience. And more sermons aren't going to make a difference. If they were going to make a difference, it would have happened by now. Now, I actually think that the way we do our teaching not only is less effective for teaching, for learning, actually, but it is actually working against learning. We don't learn because of the way we've been teaching. Let me show you what I mean. You hear another sermon, and then the next week, you can do none of it. Not, not do anything about it. Come back and hear a whole other sermon, and then another sermon, and another sermon, and we are non-verbally telling people, you don't actually have to do anything about it. All you have to do is hear it. And what happens is you pile all this new information upon other information without any life change, without any application to your life, and you become callous to truth. You become inoculated to the gospel. And soon, you're no longer learning. You're just hearing. And that's the situation we have so much of in the church. The writer of Hebrews says, this is, you become dull of hearing. You've heard so much that you no longer pay attention to it. It doesn't affect your life. Maybe there's one or two sermons you remember, but the vast majority you don't remember them. That's not really learning. That's why we need to make this shift. We need to stop making the pastor and the preaching and the sermon the most important thing. And we need to make disciples, learners, pupils, the actual learning a higher priority. 
So here's something I suggested before. I'm going to suggest it again. If you're a teacher, no matter whether you teach Sunday school or an actual class or you're, or you're a preacher on Sunday morning in a pulpit, don't teach a second lesson until the first lesson is done. And a lesson is never learned until it's being told to someone else, passed on. If we just did that, it would change everything. And you might say, but then we wouldn't have a sermon every week. Exactly. I think sermons are valuable, but they should be rare. Not every single week. We could do other things, right? Maybe we could have a meal together. Talk to one another. Maybe we could go paint a, a, an elderly woman's house for her or mow an old man's lawn or maybe we could fix someone's plumbing. Could that be Christian? <laughs> could that be godly? I think so. You see, we could do things that are relational because the worship service has no place in it for relationship. Have you noticed that? You just stare at the back of someone's head listening to someone on a stage talk. There's no relate. Well, wait. Let me correct that. There's a two-minute neighbor nudge. That's our idea of relationship. Now let me remind you, the most important thing, the excellent way, according to Paul, is love. And love requires a context of relationship. So you would think that the most important component of church is relationship because that's where love thrives. But that's not been our value. Our value has been teaching, not learning, not loving, but teaching. So if you have knowledge and the ability to communicate, you are lifted up and exalted and valued and paid. We need to make this change. We need to be more relational. We need to be different enough to make a difference in this world. And I think that begins with listening to Jesus and doing what he says. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to like or share these videos if they're valuable to you. I appreciate you listening. Listen to Jesus. Do what he says.